Meet Adrian, age six. This is some great work. And his robot friend, Kiwi. You are doing an amazing job. On this weekend morning, they've settled in to play some games, along with big brother Darren. Adrian is on the autism spectrum, and Kiwi is no toy. It's a socially assistive robot. You are doing really great. Keep up the good work. Social assistive robotics is a new field that we actually founded about 15 years ago based on the ability of robots to help people. Many children on the autism spectrum can respond positively to robots and in fact can be motivated and learn social skills. With support from the National Science Foundation, roboticist Maya Matarek and a team are building and programming these unique robots in their lab at the University of Southern California. They even worked with a puppeteer to design its look. It's part of a first-of-its-kind field study designed to see how children like Adrian would benefit from having a socially assistive robot in the home. This is truly above and beyond. Wonderful work. So the goal is to really study what happens when the robot is in the home for an extended period of time. Oh, we have three robots deployed right now. Matarek and her students work closely with educational psychologist Giselle Ragusa. She's helped develop the game content, recruit families, and assess the progress of the children in the program. The idea behind the whole in-home experience is that we want to bring the intervention and the therapeutic interaction to the child at their level, in their environment, with the kind of comfort that they have and need at home so that they can select to interact at a time that is best and optimal for their learning and for their social behaviors. Early results are promising. The children's math skills are improving and the data sets collected by the robot are huge. For every session where the child and the robot are interacting, we're getting video, audio, we're getting performance on the game, so there's so much to analyze. What I'm having the annotators annotate for is um, eye gaze. Yes. They document as much as they can, everything from eye gaze to verbal responses. So we're hoping to collect enough data to where we can train some machine learning algorithms so that our robot could get better over time in adapting to each child. Think of it as personalized learning. The robot will recognize patterns in the child's behavior and responses and tailor the interactions accordingly. I think that having a piece of technology that's able to work with the child many, many hours and see their progress over many, many hours and give us that data and give the algorithms that data would enable better adaptation to that child's particular needs. The team says robots like these would never replace humans as primary caregivers. Our dream world would be for a child with autism spectrum disorder to have a therapist who could then program this bot or some derivative of that to go home with the child and the child would be getting therapeutic intervention as many as five to seven times a week. I'm sorry, that's not the right answer. You will get it next time. It's all part of a larger vision, putting robots to work so as helpers. Social assistive robots can help individuals who are maybe isolated, lonely, um, depressed. They can fill in where people cannot be to help other people. That's the idea. Not that they're replacing people, but when there is no one else, someone or something should be there. A friend in need is a friend indeed, human or robot. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.